Hello everyone, greetings, welcome back to my channel to discuss all about mushrooms. I am so excited to talk about this film. It actually has become one of my favorite films. I mean, I know it's a documentary, but I just fell in love with it. In fact, after I saw it, I immediately bought it. So I rented it and then I bought it. So that's how much I loved it. Um, so we're gonna watch the trailer together and uh, hopefully you will get a chance to see um, what I am talking about. And then we'll talk a little bit about it one second here. My mission is to discover the language of nature of the fungal networks that communicate with the ecosystem. And I believe nature is intelligent. You know, these mushrooms can get you high, they can heal you, they can feed you, they can kill you. Mushrooms are not like a vegetable. And it's not like an animal, but it's somewhere in between. They respond to their environment, they seek out food, and they defend themselves. They solve problems. I mean, they correct everything on us. They support life, they convert life, they carry life. They're remarkable beings. Just to give you an idea of how much fungi are in the forest, as you're walking through, it's about 300 miles of fungi. The bulk of the organism is growing underground and it's composed of these long threads called a mycelium. Almost everyone knows about the computer internet. The mycelium shares the same network as mine. It's amazing. They really are a frontier of knowledge. Why do mushrooms produce molecules that fit receptors in the human brain and body? Does that mean that we're supposed to be using these things? I have been a guide for around 350 psilocybin sessions. The most glorious part of it was that it made me feel more comfortable with, with living, you know, because uh, you're not afraid of dying. One third of individuals in the study said it's the single most spiritually significant experience of their lives. Uh, from my perspective, this core experience informs all of the religious, ethical, and moral traditions. I mean, that is the core of love thy neighbor as thyself. I could see this as being critical to the evolution of the species, frankly. There's a brilliant chemistry to mushrooms. They probably can help us solve all sorts of problems. They can break down anything that's hydrocarbon based. So that includes stuff like oil spills. You can filter water. You can create medicinal compounds almost on demand. They have incredible capacity to make things change very, very quickly. So if we can work with them, if we get it, you know, if humans get it, we can change this thing really fast. So I am super hopeful. You're officially a mushroom farmer. I see my species as part of a larger whole, rather than being at the top of the pyramid, being one of the organisms within inside the circle. And the circle is made up of mycelium, holding us all together. We are not an individual. We are a vast network of molecules and energies and wavelengths. The interconnectedness of being is who we are. When we see it, we understand it. When we understand it, we care about it. And when we care about it, we'll do something to help save it. We need to have a paradigm shift in our consciousness. What will it take to achieve that? Right. So that is just an incredible introductory to this video. I mean, just the spiritual tone in it and the wisdom of nature that Paul Stamets has is just incredible. I mean, he himself reminds me of an elemental soul. I thought that I was looking at a dwarf or somebody that was um, like a gnome in the forest. 
teaching humans about nature. It was just such a comforting film to watch, especially nature lovers and those who really resonate with the fairies. In fact, I would say that this movie really gets you close to understanding the fairy realm. Fairies are actually beings of light and, and energy, but when we understand the actual mechanisms behind nature, we get to the core of fairyland. And so this movie, I would say, is the closest to showing us um, that type of uh, realm. And possibly in the past, uh, fairies were, were actually um, inspired by all these different types of mushrooms. You learn that there's 1.5 million species of fungi in the world. And so they all look so different. And you could see like, you know, a little fairy hat or a little fairy dress. And so you could see that it sparks creativity um, and it shows that there's a really deep nature connection. I'm gonna read you the very beginning part where Brie Larson is a narrator and she does a great job. But for those of you who can't watch this, I wanna give you a good extensive kind of overview of the video. So in case you don't ever get a chance to see, at least you get to take home some of the main parts. So she says this, there's a feeling, the pulse of eternal knowledge when you sense the oneness you are with us. We brought life to earth. You can't see us, but we flourish all around you, everywhere and everything, and even inside you, whether you believe in us or not. From your first breath to your last, we are the oldest and the smallest, we are the wisdom of a billion years. We are creation. We are resurrection, condemnation, and regeneration. We are mushrooms. And I just loved how she said it. And it really just shows you how connected we really are to the fungi kingdom. In fact, it's really interesting to think about, but um, uh, in the tree of life, you had the branching of mammals and fungi. And humans actually share, um, we're kind of right in the middle in a way where we share um, a lot of commonalities with fungi. We're actually really closely related to the fungi kingdom, which is really interesting because when you think about fairies, you could think about how they're related to, to fungi and kind of represent that. So it means that there is actually a really deep closeness for all humans uh, to reconnect to the roots of nature and to get in touch with that uh, inner fungi. <laughs> so I just want to read you some things that Paul Stamet said in a TED talk about fungi and why he produced this film with uh, Louis Schwarzenberg and why uh, fungi became a really important part of his passion to kind of wake the world up to an alternate type of um, energy that we can be using. So fungi is actually proposed that there are six ways that it can change the future of this world. He said that fungi cleans up oil spills because they can break down anything carbon-based. So they have done experiments to show that it can actually break down the, the, um, the carbon um, hydrogen bonds. And then that would actually help to clean up our pollution in the ocean and uh, the oil spills that you know happen. So that's a really wonderful thing because that's one thing that we're always concerned about is the ocean um, oil spills. So yay for that. Number two, he said that it absorbs farm pollution. So one of the problems that we have right now is in the farm industry, there's a lot of toxic and a lot of uh, really buildup of waste and, and it runs off and it goes into the water. So what he did was he actually placed sacks filled of debris and the mycelium that are basically the nerve endings of the mushrooms and actually um, put it over by, I guess, a downstream where there is, um, where farms basically sent like the waste of, to, to run out um, of the farm. And so he was able to place it there and it was actually, it says, place them downstream of farms to filter runoff. 
And in a few days, the mushrooms reduced bacteria up to 10,000 times. So it does clean up and absorb farm pollution as well as other pollution, anything that is carbon-based. The third thing that he talked about is the antibiotics. Now this is important since humans are so closely related to the fungi kingdom and the animal kingdom, they carry the same pathogens. And so the, um, the many different types of species of fungi can actually be, be used to cure illnesses and to also act as antibiotics. Um, Argaricon is a very large mushroom that's found in old growth forests. And it was found to be active against pox viruses as well as the flu. Now there's nothing that cures the flu, but he has actually discovered that this actually can really help um, with the flu and three strains actually. And the other thing too is lion's mane mushroom was discovered to help regrow nerves in the brain, which could be actually treatment for Alzheimer's and dementia. So that's really amazing news because it was not thought to be possible to have neurogenesis where you can actually regrow the nerves in the brain. So they have shown in their studies that this is actually true. And uh, this is really exciting to move forwards with this. So they're in the very beginning stages of discovering this, but this is incredible. Um, turkey tail mushrooms actually cured Paul Stamets mother by helping to dissolve her tumors that she was diagnosed uh, with in her breast. And so he, he says this on his TED talks that this was really one of like the most rewarding experiences being able to work with fungi is to see the remarkable benefits in his own life. His mother does not have those tumors anymore. It truly dissolved them. So this is incredible information that will help the future of humanity in many ways. The other thing that he talked about was that <clears throat> you can actually create fungus-based insecticides, which can stop ants and termites and other types of insects from invading. And that's so much healthier for our bodies to be able to use a fungus-based insecticide, which is not full of all the chemicals and hard pollutants. Also, I, I'm not sure if they talked about, but I think pesticides would also, also work as well if they can figure out how to do that too. But that would be incredible to be able to utilize the biggest uh, organism on our planet in many ways. The fungi are the largest um, group of beings basically on our planet. So why don't we start to utilize them? And they grow really fast. He also talked about they can also help with regreening the planet, the entire planet. He has found that um, he created a life box, which is a cardboard box, which had soil, water, and then the fungi spores, and it can grow other seeds for food. In a box, you can grow corn, beans, squash, and onions. So he thought that this would be perfect for uh, refugee countries and those countries that are in poverty and are lacking food source. How incredible would that be? You can also use the tree seeds to jumpstart a new forest with the help of fungi. So, I mean, there you go. It helps grow our forests, which we really need to do because um, we have really cut down our forests for human consumption. Um, the other, the other thing he said was that it can also create a sustainable fuel source too. Mycelium has potential to move us away from fossil fuels. He says, instead of wasting energy by going directly from cellulose to ethanol, he uses mycelium as an intermediary, allowing the fungus to naturally convert cellulose into fungal sugars. And so it can actually maybe power our cars one day, who knows, but this can actually be something that can replace um, the fossil fuels that we do use right now as coal and oil. So this is another thing here. Um, 
the last thing that he talked about too in in this documentary and we're going to talk about it more extensively because i've had personal experience with this is it is now being shown that it is helping people with depression and other types of uh, mental health problems um, the fda has approved trials in certain mental health facilities especially the John Hopkins Center. And a very exciting progress with that, 70% of patients said that it was very meaningful experience to them and has helped them. They have now moved on to phase two trial by, well, by 2021, they will move towards the phase two trial and that will be completed and then move them on to the phase three. So I guess the FDA is all about just having to, you know, you have to prove that it's not a harmful substance to humans. So they're trying to um, go through these clinical trials in order to see if this can be something that can help with mental health all around. Um, so this is really exciting because um, this can really help people and I've had personal experience with this. Um, so we can talk a little bit about that, the idea that it's uh, psilocybin, which is the hallucinogenic chemical in certain mushrooms. So not all of them. You don't want to eat, take um, <laughs> all of the mushrooms because some of them will kill you. And so you have to know which ones to use. Um, but you have people like Paul Stemitz who spend all their time in a forest and um, that is their passion. So it's incredible that this knowledge is coming forward. Um, but this is a certain chemical that in certain mushrooms, it actually can reshape the brain cells in and increasingly shows that it actually can um, have a potential for treating depression and also addiction to things. So things that create a pattern in the brain over and over again, it will show a new way in the brain basically. Um, what they have shown in the documentary, which was really interesting, was that mice that were fear conditioned in an experiment, which is always sad. I don't like it when they test on animals at all, but they didn't do any harm to them, they just, um, kind of scared them. And then when they started to prescribe the, uh, the, the psilocybin to the mice, they actually went above their fear and they didn't react anymore. So it meant that it created a new pathway in the brain to rise above the fear, basically. So this has many spiritual implications. And we'll talk more about that. But magic shrooms have been shown uh, to allow our brain access to untapped potential. And under the influence, the brain creates a feedback loop of neuron activity and neurotransmitter release, which are the chemicals messengers that neurons use to communicate to each other. So it quite literally connects the synapses. And I would say an even more powerful way than marijuana does, but marijuana does help too. But there is something very powerful in the, the fungi because of the mycelium networks that is very closely related already to the human brain. So what they're showing is that because the mycelium is, is it has more synapses and, and even has more electrical impulses and electrolytes in the mycelium than the human brain, that taking it somehow uh, fits perfectly in the human brain and actually can help regrow areas, um, connect synapses again, and allow you to use uncharted territory in your brain. That's the question that you know I think we're trying to ask is how can we start using these other parts of our mind that we seem to not be using um, and so the neuroscientists have shown studies and you can go to the description on my video to read it for yourself because it's very, very exciting news. And it makes sense because if you ever do experience a, mag a magic shroom, you do come out of that experience different. I would say that 
Um, it really truly does help you to see the world in a new way, to see yourself in a new way. And in fact, um, there's a really beautiful way of explaining this, but uh, in the documentary, one of my favorite things that one of the clinician says at John Hopkins is that people would say during the trial that when my firstborn came into this world, I'll never forget that and life has never been the same. Or my father passed away and it was deeply moving to me and now I am different now in the world. They say it's kind of like that. And that is a perfect way to, ex to explain this. It's a really mind-opening experience and um, it's nothing to be afraid of except for fear itself. And it is truly um, kind of remarkable with all of its health benefits that are coming forwards to really help. I really love this and this is one of my favorite quotes and then I wanna just kind of read you what uh, J.R. Tolkien said about um, and mushrooms. But he said, he said this, um, one of the patients in the clinical trials at John Hopkins said, it made me feel more comfortable living because I'm not afraid of dying. And that makes so much, much sense to me because they really get to experience love from nature and experience themselves as, as part of something greater than, you know, the, the ego. Um, perhaps the mushrooms have uh, these secrets that they whisper to, to humans that they are connected to nature and they're connected to a larger source of things. And, and you know, mushrooms have been there from day one. I mean, they've been part of this, this world 4.6 billion years ago they started. It's shown. I mean, there are really incredible um, organisms that are still very much here on Earth and they're like billions of years old. Um, so there's really incredible um, ways to experience the, um, you know, the, the, the mushroom in your life. Now, not all of them will produce the psychedelic effect. And some of them are just simply, you know, what you would put in your salad or you would eat on its own. Um, and so they're trying to find out right now which mushroom helps what illness and cures what problem. And Paul Stemmett is definitely like on the front runner of that type of um, uh, research. And so that is really, really exciting. I wanted to read you this part here in which J.R.R. Tolkien, I have this wonderful book about all the different types of uh, flora and fauna <laughs> of Middle Earth. And he says this, that according to mushrooms, there was beer in plenty and a mighty dish of mushrooms and bacon, besides much other solid farmhouse fare. And this was in Lord of the Rings and Fellowship when he's talking about in the Shire. The importance of mushrooms in the life of hobbits is presented most clearly in the Lord of the Rings. In the chapter, A Short Cut to Mushrooms, in which we encounter Frodo, Sam, and Pippin, although hunted by black riders, enjoying a brief interval of safety and eating dinner at the home of Farmer Maggot. The highlight of this meal was a huge dish of mushrooms and bacon. In the next chapter, we are told that hobbits have a passion for mushrooms, surpassing even the greediest likings of big people. And we begin to understand the reasons behind Bilbo's youthful mushroom gathering adventures in Farmer Maggot's fields. These mushrooms are not described in detail, but it is likely that they were a species of Ar Argaricus. This large genus contains the most commonly cultivated mushroom, the button mushroom or portobello. And this species is widespread and common in Europe. However, several species of Argar Argaricus are edible, so the mushrooms so enjoyed by Frodo and his companions could have also been species such as the horse mushroom or the field meadow mushroom, all produce quite similar fruiting bodies. These fungi grow in open era areas, especially pastures, so one can easily imagine the mushrooms being gathered around Farmer Maggot's home. I love that. That is so wonderful. Um, now he does 
say that elves would not touch the things in terms of eating them. I'm not sure J.R.R. Tolkien was talking about psychedelics, but he said, certainly said that the elves didn't really like to eat them because they were fun fungi, and then the um, the uh, the hobbits did, and and they they would eat them in plenty. Um, and the interesting thing is, like, I'm not so much of a fan to eat mushrooms as much. I mean, I I will if it's if it's done nicely in a salad and if there's like a nice little sauce behind it, um, but I have microdosed with uh, with magic shrooms, and it is an incredible experience. In fact, Silicon Valley is known uh, that a lot of them microdose, you know, daily or whenever they need just like a little bit of boost. It really helps to reconnect the synapses, and it does make you feel quite alert. Um, and when you microdose, you're not getting the full on hallucinogenic effect, but you're connecting those synapses in the brain. So it makes you just kind of experience life in a brighter way, be feeling more connected um, to yourself, to others, uh, to your own thoughts. Um, so it really helps the mind in many ways. My experience that I've had, um, because there are several places now where it is legal to actually partake in uh, the magic mushroom recreationally. My experience has been that it has shown me some incredible um, truths about uh, myself and about the world. Um, I'll, I'll say this, the the word hallucinogenic is kind of funny to me because for me i don't necessarily see a different reality unless i close my eyes which i did one time i closed my eyes and i experienced something completely because if you close your eyes while on it and that's what the clinical trials are about you would see in the documentary it's a completely different experience because it's behind your eyelids you, you're in darkness so it's just your mind going but when your eyes are open what usually happens to me is that you're looking around. Um, I like to go out into nature. We like to do it in the forest or by a lake or something. And nature is brighter. Now, nature is always bright to me, but if I can imagine it being more brighter, it is. And it's like sparkling and shimmering. And it's incredible because the... Um, the psilocybin does create um, synthesia, I think that's what it's called, and it's where it messes with the kind of perception and idea that it combines them. So you might actually taste, sound, you know, hear colors, um, and you experience reality in a really different perspective. So it happens to show you some kind of energetic uh, reality of what all matter is made of. The last time I had it, I everywhere I looked, I saw leave vein patterns everywhere I looked. It was like right over my eyes. I just saw that everything was like a leaf. So to me, that just really connected the idea that everything is nature, which it is, but it confirmed that experience with me. And it was just incredible. I mean, as an elven soul to get that confirmation in a world where sometimes um, it can be so disconnected to nature. When I looked at my friends, I look at you know the world and, and I look everywhere around me and I see that it's nothing but nature. It's a really incredible experience. And I could probably attest to that these people that are going through these uh, clinical trials of it and are getting help with their depression and their, um, you know, their, their anxiety and also their addictions, it is showing them something more than their limited perception on life. And that's really, I think, the gift that you see and that you get, that you actually get to experience your unlimited self in terms of your perception and your senses. Now, if you are extrasensory as it is, then you're going to have even more of a heightened experience. 
which I do. I mean, I see colors and lights and it's really beautiful. And it's not overwhelming, at least in my experience, where it's not like a, it's not like how they show in the movies where people go through psychedelics and it just looks really weird. That's not it. To me, it's more the truer reality, which is hard to, you know, think about sometimes because it's not reality in that moment, but it actually is because since my brain is being rewired and reworked and connecting synapses again, it is showing the world in its true form that I would normally see if I could somehow connect those synapses naturally. And I said this in another video, I, I really got a very strong message actually during one of my sessions that that is a glimpse of where humanity to, can go with their extrasensory ability that as soon as their sense is heightened, then they will start to see the energetic reality around them. And that's what uh, magic shroom can do. It can actually show you what truly exists behind the veil of this material world. So it, it was just an incredible experience. And, um, you know, if you do it with somebody that you really care about and you love and to your friends that you really trust, then you will have a great time. You can end up talking for like six to 12 hours all night long and being mirrors for each other and really having profound revelations together, um, deepening your relationship to each other because there's a type of honesty that, that occurs because the ego is down. It is fully yourself very vulnerable at, at a time and you're experiencing everything at a heightened sense of, of perception. Um, and that includes other people, meaning you are experience, you can experience their emotional body and ultimately get to their soul, to their heart of their soul. And I think that's what makes the, um, I think that's what makes it's so enjoyable to do it with friends that you really care about or, um, you know, people that you really like um, and that you trust um, and that, you know, it can really build that connection and move it to a higher place. And that is that has been my experience with it. It has been really incredible. Um, I have. I, I really do. I really have a feeling that. Um, our world will definitely get better if we start to use the technology of mycelium and we start to apply the um, different ways of using fungi energy. I think that's a really incredible movement towards the future. I'm very excited that we have people that are working in that direction who are not just thinking about you know, technology and cyborg technology and nanobots and things like that. But they're actually looking deeper into nature and seeing what technology already exists. We have found that the mycelium is, it's it almost exactly the way that the network, the internet works. That's how they communicate to each other. And they send uh, messages and signals and there are organisms that are across the entire forest sometimes. So they are huge organisms and they communicate to each other. They're sentient and they're aware. So it's very much almost like man created the internet in reflection of this natural internet that we have around our world in fungi. So it's just, an incredible documentary that really will open your mind to many things. And I tell you, seeing those mushrooms grow, I mean, moving art that did all of the visuals basically for the film, it is moving art. I mean, you can sit there and enjoy and you can even be on a magic shroom and enjoy it. And that is an experience too, but oh my goodness, like it is incredible 
we need to work towards the decriminalization of this because as many of the um you know the the professionals that are part of the clinical trials they said that this is really sad that they're showing so much improvement in people through the use of of uh, of fungi and yet it's still illegal some places so we have a bit of a battle there are a few places now where it is becoming legalized. So that's really exciting. And I think that there's going to be more and more. I think they just need to keep going through these clinical trials to get it out there and to show that it is safe to the public. Now, the only cautions really and concerns, I mean, if you want to say a bad trip, um, a bad trip is really one that you need to have, basically. I mean, I've had some because it's important for you to go through the subconscious of whatever's stored in there and work through it. But this is a really kind type of uh, psychedelic in that it's really gentle and you have about six like, to 12 hours sometimes, even the next day you might feel it too. And you can go through these kind of self-realizations. So what I experience is like things from my subconscious, both good and maybe not so fun to look at, will come up through the night, you know, and, and it'll be something that I'll look at both, as Carl Jung said, both the divine as well as the monsters are stored in the subconscious. So you have the divine that comes to the surface and you are experiencing a great oneness and unity with all things and you actually experience yourself in your divine uh, you know, state of being. But there also is a chance where your subconscious can then pull up things that you still need to look at and you still need to work on. So your insecurities, um, could make you paranoid. It could make you feel like um, you need to do something because it's like pressing on your mind in that moment. And you find that um, it's kind of funny trying to, to, to do something because sometimes um, your body doesn't move with you as much. But you start to realize that after a while kind of processing that information that there's a lot of love behind even the darker things to look at in your subconscious. And that's incredible. You actually do feel the experience of being loved, you know, being love at the highest place. And this is attributed to nature. Nature to me is love. And I love that they said that in the documentary because it's true. It's so true when you look at all the things that nature has done for humanity in terms of giving us air to breathe. The fungi is giving antibiotics like penicillin and all these different ways of curing illnesses and diseases and possibly even more in the future. If we can move past the bureaucratic kind of red tape we can really start to cure things in this future. And it's just incredible to think about all that love in nature is ultimately us. It's part of us. We are part of this great organism. Um, and it's a really an amazing experience to feel connected to that. And I think that's probably why it can help people with depression, um, anxiety, and uh, feeling like, you know, they don't belong anywhere. They're sad all the time. Um, even if you're not necessarily diagnosed with something, but you just have some sadness in you, it will work through it gently. There's a gentle type of way that you can come to some realizations. And um, I say, just go with that process, let it unfold. And it can be a really incredible journey. And I do hope that um, more people are able to uh, partake in this because I think that it will really help them in life. And, and it has helped me kind of remember more things about myself and uh, get in touch with some of the higher realms when I am doing it in terms of um, seeing light 
and seeing energy kind of play off in, in my reality. Um, and there's some really interesting conversations that I've had with people that have also been, you know, a transcendent type of moment. So that is my experience. I felt absolutely nothing negative about it at all. I would say I always recommend that you give yourself a full day of kind of recouping the next day. The reason is, is because you might stay up all night talking and enjoying and exploring your soul and exploring the soul of others. And even watching a movie is really a wonderful experience. Watching a movie or listening to some music can really um, let you experience it in a new way. And uh, I, I just think that it's an incredible experience that I hope that uh, more people are not so afraid to have um, because if you know the right ones to take, there's a lot of gifts in nature as I call them God keys. They help to show your true self and the truer nature of reality in terms of an energetic state. So I'll go to the comments and you can ask me any question you would like and I will try to do my best. Now I do have on Thursday, somebody that uh, lives in a state where it's legal or at least um, a, a city and it's um, really great to have him come to my channel. His name is Keith Man of Letters. That's his, well, that's his channel name, Man of Letters. And he is an elemental soul. And he actually can talk about growing mushrooms. And and he um, is really into a lot of like nature things. So it'll be really fun to have him on Thursday. But go ahead and ask me some questions and <laughs> or comment. <clears throat> All right, squirrel. I've been microdosing this week. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's really great. Yeah, you know what? Um, microdosing this week is, uh, I'm sure you've had some interesting experiences. <laughs> yeah, microdosing is um, a kind of interesting experience because it is not necessarily as intense of a hallucinogenic. So that's why. Um, Really, people are doing it now, you know, at their jobs and Silicon Valley, they're, they're really, Silicon Valley um, is actually, um, you know, known to kind of partake in that. So, yeah, it is, a. I think it's a, a, a helpful thing. Um, I personally like microdosing much more than taking a full on. The reason is because I like to have a little bit of a softer experience, maybe because I'm an empath and sensitive as it is. So sometimes it can be a little overwhelming for me, but you see how it is, you know, um, microdosing is really just almost like half the regular dose. So if you're with somebody that is, um, you know, who can supply you them, they'll probably know what to do, but you just take a little bit less than you normally would. I find like I'm good with two, three little tiny shrooms and that's it. <laughs> Random question, Solavi. Okay. Gelflings from the dark crystal have an elven nature? Of course. Yeah. Well, Gelflings are a type of elf, I think. I definitely think they are for sure. Yes. Uh, Noreen, COVID, can mushrooms hold a cure? <laughs> Just a mucine. It's a very good mucine. Well, they were shown to help with three types of poxes. So um, smallpox and also a flu and some other strains. So, I mean, yeah, I wonder. I wonder if they can actually start testing that right now. That would be a really great thing because then we don't have to be all vaccinated. <laughs> Which I will get into more in the future. Miss Jamie, I believe that's very possible. Yeah, I, I agree too. I think so too. Yeah, maybe a cure for cancer. Well, the tumor that was in uh, Paul, uh, Paul's mother, I mean, it was, I think, cancerous. So there were several tumors and it 
they completely went away. So yes, I definitely think that if we found um, the right combination or the right types of compounds that we need from a particular fungi, they probably could cure cancer. There's 1.5 you know, million species of them. One of them is bound to help because they do help with regeneration and uh, neurogenesis and all that. So I'm sure that they're going to kind of reverse the, um, the cell mutation of cancer. I can see that very much being a reality. Solovy, I wonder if mushrooms can cure COVID. I don't know, lungs and humans respond to marshmallow root, licorice root, mint. Yeah, all of, all of that does help. Um, but yeah, if they start to, to figure out I mean, it, it's an antibiotic already. So curing COVID, maybe, yeah. I mean, it depends what um, they can help with the certain symptoms, but possibly can be an antibiotic as well. Uh, Nurin, plants communicating using the mycelium networks via, yep, the nutrient transfer codes. I love it. Yes. And it's it's incredible because it's just like how the internet works. It really is like the natural internet. That's what Paul Stemmet says. And I agree. I mean, immediately when you know you think about the way that the roots reach into the ground and they communicate with even the tree roots and they have this this whole network of connections, um, they are passing messages and and signals back and forth through that mycelium network, just like our brain does. So, yeah. So, Levy, magic shrooms do shift perspective. They do. And I loved how they said that it was just something that makes them a little different in the world, that in many ways, it kind of reminds them of having a large emotional event happen to them. So that is probably suggesting that, at least in their experiences like me, also that these experiences have been relatively positive and giving them a new sense of, you know, reality and a feeling like, you know, they that they're renewed in some way. I think renewal is truly the healing effect that they're experiencing. Miss Jamie, it raised the question, do we owe our evolution, especially our minds, to the consumption of mushrooms by our ancestors? Yeah. Well, it's funny because, I mean, psychedelics such as um, a silo, uh, psilocybin ended up just being... Uh, illegal, like in the 60s, because there was this huge movement. And all of a sudden, Nixon and many of, of the government thought that this was dangerous. I mean, they probably never even went to Woodstock and had a really meaningful conversation with somebody that was <laughs> shrooming. Um, so there's a lot of fear behind mushrooms. So it's silly that people are going to go to jail or that, you know, they could get in trouble for almost going to a forest and plucking something from the ground and eating it. But I mean, that's the kind of world that we live in, but we have to break free of that too. And I do think that this kind of new uh, renewing of the FDA approval and allowing certain states like Ann Arbor, Michigan and some places in California and Denver, Colorado is now completely fine to do these. Um, I think that this is the right step in the right direction. And we do owe it to ourselves. We do in, in terms of helping us get in touch with nature and allowing us to have that connection. There is a theory that uh, uh, Terrence uh, McKenna said, where it's talking about the stoned ape theory. He believes that basically um, humanity could have evolved from the ancestors of apes that ended up eating a mushroom one day. And then that shifted their perspective. I mean, it's a very good theory, shifted their perspective and then allowed them to uh, think differently about their world, to build new tools or 
construct a house in a different way. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different theories out there, but that one sounds like a pretty good one, the stone date theory. Miss Jamie, it makes sense to lose the fear of death from the wisdom of a mushroom. They grow from death and decay and then flourish. Yep, <laughs> exactly. They do. That's what they kind of represent. And so it's, yeah, that's, it's like almost like the mycelium, the mushroom itself is connecting to the brain of the human that takes it. And then it can experience that kind of message that there's really nothing to fear that you belong to a greater um, sense of community with nature itself. That, you know, this collective of the earth, whether you also believe that you belong to, you know, other planets too, but we are right now experiencing this collective together. So the nurturing aspect of the mushrooms could be helping people feel that connection once again and feel unafraid because um, they know that their consciousness can go on and that their memory can almost be stored in a way, you know, part of the collective consciousness. I love, I, I, yeah, I really love that comment. Narin, my experience on LSD were much more profound than mushrooms, but although it can be argued that it's from the rot in a certain grain that it also came. Yeah, I mean, it's all up to different people, I guess, um, in terms of their experience. But I would say that shrooms seem to have, I've heard more positive experiences. Like they'll never, I don't really think that they'll really prescribe LSD for help with mental illnesses or, um, you know, any type of uh, like clinical trials that will go on with that. LSD was being used by the government and tested. Um, like I, I think in the 60s or so, they were trying to see what its effects were and probably also trying to um, increase their psychic abilities and do remote viewing and such with that. But then they made it totally illegal. But now, Yes, it is considered part of the psychedelics, so some places it is legal. So we'll see, maybe. I just have found that there's a gentler type of approach, I guess, to self-realization with uh, shrooms rather than LSD. It seems almost like LSD can really... There's a great Netflix movie you might want to watch. It's uh, about... <sighs> It is about psychedelics and it's all different actors like Sting and uh, lots of different ones uh, talking about psychedelics, their experiences with it. I forgot what it's called, but if you just go to Netflix and just look it up, um, it's a pretty interesting video. And it kind of shows that like, there can be, depending what you're dealing with in that moment, there can be actually... Um, I think it's more of an intense experience. Like you said, you said it was more profound. It can be more intense for people. Shrooms are a lot more gentle, I feel. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, seems like nobody really has any problems, I guess we're all aligned. Now, I know that some people won't really, you know, agree with this, but there is a, there is a mushroom phobia out there. And if you watch this documentary, I ask that, you know, just keep an open mind and maybe you will learn something about mushrooms in general. So what's really nice is that it's not completely about psychedelics, but it actually goes into just all of the different benefits that mushrooms have for us. So it can be enjoyable to a lot of people that are looking for information on nature itself. I just really love it. And I, I've been watching it all the time. Just it's very relaxing to have on at night. And you, I mean, you saw the visuals. It's very beautiful. It really does kind of take me into fairy, the fairy realm. <laughs> Miss Jamie, I believe in the power of using the medicine of mushroom. I personally haven't tried it out of fear, but I'm having a shift uh, shift in perspective. Yeah, I say watch the documentary and, and then you make your decision. 
and you, you know, can go from there. You know, if it calls to you, because I feel like nature is really uh, the type of tool that calls to us, whether it be ayahuasca or um, marijuana leaf or the shrooms, it will call to us. Like you'll just feel all of a sudden that you want to try it or maybe you'll be at a party and somebody will have it. Um, and, you know, it will be the right time for you maybe in your choice. But uh, my experience has been very positive with it. And I do hope that we can completely decriminalize it and really help to liberate uh, people that have gotten in trouble for using it and um, just keep on having more and more states where it becomes legalized. We're in 420 all day, every day here, big green head, nothing like completely stone while surrounded by beautiful nature scenery. Yeah, it's wonderful being in nature, isn't it? When you are you have a heightened perspective in that moment. And you know what I really like about my experiences is that it kind of trains your mind to see that all the time in many ways. Um, I mean, I believe that that you know, it, it can help you get to that place. If you don't already have kind of that heightened experience, like sometimes I experience life like that, like I'm kind of high all the time in a way um, where I can kind of have those heightened um, perspectives about nature uh, just, you know, just because I've loved it for so long. But I believe that it can help anybody kind of reconnect to nature and then have those heightened experiences when they're not on it. It can maybe be memorized or remembered in their mind and somehow stored in their brain how beautiful life can be, how beautiful this reality really is. And it really does help you kind of have no longer a fear of living I mean, that's that's a perfect way to express what it does for you. It doesn't it doesn't scare you anymore to live in many ways because you see some of the tr the spiritual truths and the divine nature within as well as all around you. Blueberry, anyone know how I can go into the fey real or fey realm? Well, it is the realm of light, blueberry. So my, my teachings basically have been that you can get there by meditation, astral travel, and um, putting yourself in that state of consciousness so that you can then experience uh, glimmers of light and you can experience seeing these beings possibly some people hear them some people see them some people experience them in their heart when they're out in the forest and in nature but it is a state of consciousness it's not like you could just walk through a gate of fairyland but it is a state of consciousness and then your reality will show you some of the glimmers of fairy but true fairy is a light realm that exists in the light body experience meaning that it is off of kind of the physical realm in the realm of the elementals and, and the light realms of energy, of light and energy. So that is, I think, the closest way that you can get there is by putting yourself into that state of mind. So, Narin, you said, oh, man, that's cool. I've had bad depression and doldrums regularly. So if you have done shrooms before would you say that it has helped you have you noticed a difference because i would say i i mean i have always been um somebody that has had kind of moderate depression and i would say that ever since i have started to partake in it uh with friends in these places like when i went to um Mich ann arbor michigan and things like that i can experience a change in that i actually do feel really healed I actually haven't had depression really. I mean, I've, I've had some hard days, but not depression like I might have normally had. That's my experience with it. 
I don't know if you want to let us know what your experience is there. But yeah, I, I, I believe that, um, you know, consciousness takes you where you want to go, always. Consciousness is your elevator, it's your ride, it's your transition. So if you are a soul here on earth that really wants to experience fairy realm once again, because I believe, you know, consciousness is infinite. We are infinite energy. So at some point you may have had some incarnation in the, the realm of fairy. And you might have stayed there for ages and ages until you decided to come down to the physical world and experience this duality of earth. You know, things like that can experience, can be experienced by a soul. But if you now are here on earth and you want to visit the fairy realm or you want to go to the fairy realm next if you stay in that consciousness state all the way until you take your last breath i believe that your consciousness will move you over but you do have to work on being accepted by the fairies accepted you know through the gate of a fairy in a way and that that is something that we can talk about in another video but I think you know what it means because it's really just about having your connection to nature once again and then wanting to go into that realm in which all beings are connected to nature and in, they're all in diversity and you don't have humans that would forget about nature, if that makes sense. What are your thoughts on marijuana? I think it's also natural too. Oh yeah. Definitely. It's definitely natural. I think um, shrooms have been more enjoyable for me, but marijuana also is, um, you know, a herb that can can produce some of those types of effects. Um, it's not a hallucinogenic. So it gives you a different type of ex experience where you're just a little bit more um, maybe chilled, but you don't really have a difference in your perception. It doesn't create different modalities of sensory experience coming together. It's just that you can experience the subconscious and you can work that out as well and have some kind of revelations and also feel very laid back and relaxed. So it's a little bit of a different thing. Naren, definitely but pot is my cure. I am helped by it with nausea and open up to a brighter view on dark days. I'm a big fan of any gr ground grown cure. Yeah. Mycelium, Argo or cannabis. You know, that that's the thing too, is that's why uh, marijuana has become legalized. It also too has been known to help depression. Um, it also has helped medicinally with pain it actually substitutes opiates. So it's better than painkillers in many ways um, because then you don't have that addiction to the opiates and um, marijuana is just sometimes what people would prefer. I mean, I definitely would if I was going through any type of illness and I had some pain. So I'm really happy for people that it had become uh, legalized. You can watch my video on marijuana. I did that as well to talk about it. And I'm now I'm doing this one since a lot of uh, places now have legalized it all of a sudden. Narin, LSD gave me a stronger breakthrough experience. Like shrooms was just a good vibe. Interesting. Yeah, it's different for everyone. It really is. But like I said, make sure that you do it when it kind of calls to you and maybe you're not uh, anxious or scared about it and you can go willingly into the experience and then that can be really fun for you and take a nice walk in nature, um, you know, or be in nature when you do it or be with friends that you really, you know, trust and enjoy. <laughs> so this is great. All right. Everyone, thank you so much for joining. Please go watch that video. I hope you do. In the description, you can find it on YouTube. It's like $3.99 to rent, or you could find it on Amazon Prime. So I hope that 
when we leave here, you'll go right to it and enjoy it. And I hope that you love it as much as I did. Thank you so much. Join me on Thursday where I talk to somebody who has a lot more experience with it and um, has grown it. And it can be a really great chat between us. And um, we'll hear from him and his experience. So I hope to see you all there. Have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you soon.